Hello everyone, this is Zivo and welcome back to yet another AFK journey video. So welcome back to today's Z best guide and in today's Z best guide, we're going to cover the Primal Lord Alpha Bear that just got released on the global server S1. So I'm pretty sure you guys are here because you guys probably saw my previous Long Gaze video. And for Alpha Bear itself, it's actually a boss that got released in PTR as well. So based on what I observed for the kit, I don't think much have changed since then. And I guess the meta teams as well as the units that you want to use for this boss stays relatively the same. So in today's video, as usual, I'll do a breakdown of the boss queue. As you guys can see over here, what are the different mechanics you want to keep a look out for what are the things you want to take note of when you do your team building when you do your positioning as well as what are the different like caveat the hidden mechanics that you guys can use to your advantage when tackling this boss itself so lastly i'll obviously offer my team builds right i'll do the meta teams as usual i'll do the free to play team for my account and then i'll talk about some substitutes that you guys can use for your own team based on your own account progression so first of all the the first attempt right over here i have three attempts as you guys can see so the very first attempt i'll just showcase the different mechanics of the optimal team because i don't have the best team available on this free to play account but i do know what are the optimal units that you guys can use for the boss so i'll try to use this account to explain the mechanics you guys slot in the units yourself don't don't just look at this like, ah this guy has a lousy rainer and he does lousy damage no it's just a sort of showcase as to how the mechanics work and i'll do a commentary for that very first battle as well so first of all let's start with the alpha bear skill so first skill ultimate summons a swarm that deals 80 percent damage per second to each enemy covered in honey for three seconds when all enemy heroes are marked with honey a mega swarm is summoned dealing 250 percent damage per second to the battle end okay so based on this skill itself you guys can see that he will summon a swarm to target honey enemy which is your unit so every unit that get honey, they will actually get this 80 damage per second when he uses a skill. And if all your units are honey, they will all the swarm will do 250% damage per second. So this means that you don't want all your all your units to get honey so fast. You want to delay the process of being honey. So in this case, how you get honey will be described in the second and third skill. So I'll explain that. But based on this skill, you basically don't want your units to be honeyed too fast, okay? Because if you if all your units get honeyed, they basically have no way to survive because of the second skill. So second skill, right? Throws honey to mark an enemy, marking them until the end of battle, dealing 100% damage, right? So this is a one-time damage. But the healing received by the marked enemy is reduced by 80% and cannot be dispelled. So basically, when your units get honeyed, they're not having like the maximum healing efficiency. So the likes of Smokey the likes of uh fey the likes of heroin they just you know like they, they cannot really like perform to the maximum level so this is not a sustainable battle right you don't want to have too many healers because the healing efficiency is really low so i'll say that treat this boss as a standard dream realm boss where you find a balance between healing tanking as well as dps so that's uh, how this uh, skill works so every time he uses this skill one of your unit will get honey so take note of that okay one unit get honey so the third skill right pause honey on himself to mark the enemy right and dealing 50 percent damage and marking them okay so this one throws honey at enemies in adjacent tau so it's a one tau radius up around the boss okay so this is where you don't want to send in too many melee units because if you send in four melee units all four of them get honey immediately and the next thing you know he chose the second skill and then he used the ultimate and then 250 percent damage per second and poof your team disappears from there so for this boss itself right um you cannot don't send melee unit in right because of the second part smashes the ground when there are no enemies in adjacent tile dealing 400 percent damage to all enemies so you need to at least send one shield folder. You need to send one unit to go in to stand on the front line to prevent the second part. At the same time, you don't want to have too many melee units that is within the one tower radius for this boss because you don't want all your units to get honey too fast. So last skill, right? Very, very straightforward skill. Mix and pull a terror ball towards the enemy, dealing 120% damage to all enemies in its path. So this is just a bowling ball technique where he will throw. So I'll talk about this skill later. So based on the first three skill, right? The objective is to delay the hunting process. The objective is not to send in too many melee units so you don't get honey too fast from the third skill and obviously you don't want to have too much healers because the healing efficiency is lowered when your units get honey 
so this is the objective and with that i'm going to review the meta team that was available in the ptr server on the side i'll also showcase the the 31 million damage done by my friend uh, afk analytical i'll link the channel in the description down below you guys can go and subscribe to it if you want to see the short video for yourself so um, i'll talk about the teams first and now i'll showcase my friend's battle right the damage and then i will do the run on this account so obviously let's come back into the team composition so just now we mentioned that you need to send in one unit right to tank the slam as well as, as the initial honey so the best unit for that will definitely be torrent because torrent basically doesn't die right until the final moment because he has revived so he will always be that one unit that goes on the front line and tank the honey skill and then prevents the boss from doing the second part of the skill which is slamming the floor and dealing 400 percent damage to all units then next one you you want to have a carry so if you are in a late game right this is in a meta late game perspective heroin with her ex weapon at supreme plus and you have all her stats on her she will be a good damage dealer but if you are you know and when the boss is below 50 percent the better option is actually using vala so vala is actually a much uh i'll say like better carry when the boss is below 50 percent because for vala's case vala's damage build up is much faster than heroin heroin does have a lot of damage over time but for this boss eventually you will die all your units will die because when they get honey right you're racing against time you want to do as much damage before all your units get honey and that's why um in terms of the damage compartment vala is better when the boss is below 50 percent because she can go into midi form and then do a ton of damage true damage and she builds up damage much faster than our dear merrily but if you don't have uh, uh our dear vala right just use uh, merrily she's still an amazing dps over here so that's one thing for you guys to take note of so obviously smoky and monkey right so uh, the reason why we use Smokey and Murky obviously is for the heals. Although the heals are not very effective against the boss, but she, he is still one of the best offensive support. With a little bit of heal, haze, attack, uh, makes it such that he's a very good uh, buffer so that your team can do as much damage as possible while, while providing a little bit of sustain from the heals itself. So obviously, Reyna, right? one of the best, uh, I'll say like uh, bossing unit. Once you have Reyna with the EX weapon, right? Do take note, okay, mine doesn't have the EX weapon. You do need at least the dynamic balance EX weapon skill to provide the 25% damage boost on the boss itself. So obviously, Reyna is there for the factional link as well as the ability, right, to uh, debuff the boss, right? That one of the best single target debuff. So yeah, just use Reyna if you have him. If you don't have Reyna, what I'll suggest is a range unit right a range unit like let's say if you do have rainer right you have a torrent which is a damage debuff you can use our dear od over here right and then you can finish the circle with coco so this is one way you can build a team but let's say if you're talking about the meta team right i'm gonna put the meta team the fire for the final unit right is actually corin so you guys must be wondering what the hell zip like i thought you guys uh you just mentioned that you shouldn't send in too many melee units okay corin has a super funny gimmick to him he's a melee unit with two attack range by the way right this setup is the meta team setup when you have all the units at supreme plus when you have all the units uh with their ex weapon as high as possible so i will put the run on the site for my friend to show you guys why this is the meta team so if you don't have merrily you use vala i mean if you ha don't have vala you use merrily right merrily is still a good damage dealer if you have vala use her when the boss is roughly around 50 percent below 50 percent so that vala can go into a mini form and she do more damage from there so now coming back into corin for corin's case why is he used in this run why are we sending corin in so two reasons okay when you send a unit in with Rainer, I mean, yeah, correct. When you send a unit in with Rainer, what happens is that the unit is actually in a one tower range of the boss. Okay, but if you send in Corin, what happens is yes, Corin starts at a one tower range, but he will actually bounce back, shield one of a unit, and then go into his two tower range attack radius. So he's a melee unit that's not within the one tower range so he doesn't get honeyed by the third skill and then from there he can also get boosted damage because this unit is actually a pretty good damage dealer with the ex weapon active 
So yeah, he is a pretty decent unit. So why why don't we send our dear Merrily in? Because if we send Merrily in, she'll be in the one tower radius. She will get hunted immediately. So you want to send a unit in that is uh you know can move away, and the best choice is Corin for this one for the factional bonuses as well as the high damage output that Corin can offer when you have the EX weapon. So on the side, I think the battle for my friends showcase will be done now. So that is the meta team in the ptr server that's the strongest team in the ptr server and with that right i'm gonna showcase my run over here and explain the mechanics to you guys based on the team i have so this is just the explanation portion and without further ado let's start this showcase okay so before i continue the relic of choice star shot spell best dream realm uh artifact best one for primal lot okay so let's start so i'll go at one time so over here as you guys can see you send corin in he will actually bounce back so he's in a two town radius so when the honey bear uses the skill as you guys can see over here torrent get the honey animation but you only have one unit with the honey applied to him okay so now he uses the honey skill again so this is the second skill he targeted smoky as you guys can see so two units are being honeyed so whenever he uses his ultimate these two units takes uh, damage uh, per second okay but Corinne is still doing damage. Rainer, in this case, in my team, is more like, uh, in this case, uh, without the EX weapon, is more like a healer for Corinne. But if you do have a, like an EX weapon active, your team will be dealing way more damage than mine. Okay, so Starshot spell will cycle through. All your units will start using their skill. And Merrily just got applied the honey over here. So three units with the honey okay so that's the terror ball by the way so that's the ball where he chose i call it the bowling pin because it's in a straight line so what you can do is you do some splitting of your unit so not so many units get hit by the bowling ball so that is for this uh, meta team setup okay so as you guys can see i still have one more unit that's not honeyed and that is our dear corin so there's no mega swarm yet so terror ball again so you guys can see right all the other damage numbers they're not very big the big numbers are the 250% from the ultimate, the Mega Swarm attack, as well as the ground slam if you don't have any melee units on the front line. Okay, so all the units, they are hunted, and then that's where the Mega Swarm come, and then poof. Okay, all my, all my units just disappear. Okay, so this is the mechanic for the meta team, right? My team obviously can't showcase the full power because I don't have Merrily's EX weapon, neither do I have Corin's EX weapon, but if you guys do have them, right, this will be the meta team setup. Okay, guys, <laughs> I kind of screwed up my second run because uh, I accidentally tapped on the start battle when I was recording and I was using the previous team. So uh, I, I sort of wasted my second run. I can't showcase to you guys, but this will be my second run showcase, which is my third attempt. As you guys can see, I'm left with one over here. So for this run, right, before I go in, I'm going to explain what I'm going to do. So I'm going to showcase the team that I'm going to run on my free-to-play account. And I'm going to offer some suggestions for you guys if you guys have a different set of units. And then I'm going to talk about what are the different substitutes you can use and what are the TLDRs, PSA that you want to take note of when you do your own team building. Okay, so let, with that, let me go into the battle slowly. I don't want to tap on the battle. Okay, so let me remove all the units carefully first. Okay, so since I have Torrent and Smokey, I'm going to run them. And then, since my OD is stronger than Merrily, I'll run OD as the carry position. And because my Rain is not very, like, not up in terms of the EX weapon, I'm not going to use Corin for this run because I'm not going to send anyone in. So I don't need the Corin gimmick. I'll use Coco instead because Coco offers an attack buff, a damage reduction on the ultimate. So if... You know, she times her ultimate well, we might be able to last a little bit longer against the Mega Swarm attack. So this is the call for. So for the last slot, I think depending on who you have, whether or not you have other stronger units, you can slot in other stronger units. So I believe most people right, who love CCL will have CCL at a very high tier. So use CCL because this completes your factional bonus. While Cecilia is able to offer additional DPS with the summons with herself. So this is one option, right? The other option, if you do have Rice, is to use Rice. So Rice is a Mauler Ranger, which means that he doesn't actually walk up to the boss. And he deals decent damage, okay? And he finished the factional bonus, which allows all your other units to survive longer while dealing more damage. Another combination for you guys is if you don't have Torrent, you want to use Kruger. So Kruger is basically the role of Torrent, although he's way less tanky because uh, his role is just to debuff with the skills and try to hold on the front line to prevent the boss from using the Mega Slam that deals 400% damage to all your units. 
So the row is the same, but if you do this, you have a mega 5 unit faction bonus. And Kruger's defense debuff actually benefits our dear Rise over here. If you do have this unit trained up, right? I know this unit is quite um not so popular. Like I don't think a lot of people training up, but he is actually a decent pick in this kind of lineup if you do have him train up. Okay, so that's for Rice. So let's put back my dear <laughs> Torrent carefully. So I will use uh, Cecil instead because I think Cecil summon will offer me a little bit more damage compared to Rice because I don't have the Kruger synergy. So I, I don't think I need the additional physical damage and Cecil is a very OP unit, right? So we're going to run Cecil over here. And if you don't have all this smaller unit, what do you do, right? Obviously you have the usual Merrily right we have our dear corin and then we have our dear rowan so this is your triple light barrel faction bonus while all of them offer a little bit of everything so corin for the shield for damage right merrily as the carry rowan as the healer while providing the energy regen to cycle through star shard spell so this is one option and then obviously stop in cc okay more summons right the summons gets more hp and then you can do more damage from there as well so that's that right other than that i will also suggest uh, putting like ranger units i think in general you kind of don't want to use uh, all the melee units like i mentioned because you basically want to store out the hunting process like i mentioned multiple times so that you can jam in as much damage as possible so the goal is to do damage as fast as possible while surviving as long as possible right so that's for this boss and without further ado i'm going to showcase my free to play account damage in the future if i do get a better showcase i'll showcase to you guys so let's put it this way and then for the final slot we're putting cc in the middle so with that let's start the battle okay so we'll go at one time to showcase the different mechanics running so honey throws on torrent because only one unit on the front line Okay, then second skill throws a honey on Smokey. So two unit is honeyed. Okay, Smokey uses a skill, charge up, charges up, uh, charges up uh, the uh, bar for everyone else faster because of the haste. Okay, Cecil does a sub does a summon. Another very interesting mechanic that you guys will realize, right, is that Cecil summon I think counts as an additional unit for the honey. So this summon actually sort of tanks the honey and then can slow down the progress as well. So this is one thing where I think Cecil could be a little better, but then comparing the damage of Cecil in the end game to some of the other meta DPS damage dealers is not as good, but it's a gimmick that you guys can try. So as you guys can see, our summon takes the honey, so it slows down the honey process. So for those of you guys who have a mythic supreme plus Cecil rejoice right this might be the time for her to shine so overall the honey process for my team is slowed down quite a lot because of the additional one summon okay so we are breaking the record so previously we are 4.8 right now we are 4.9 so very very good damage output so now Cecil still haven't get honey as you guys can see so the mega song haven't appeared yet but now all the units are honey okay so as you guys can see, once all your units are honeyed, you basically cannot survive. Okay, so we throw in one more ultimate. Can we do more damage? Can Torrens revive by more time? Okay, 5.47. Pretty decent for, uh, I'll say, my free-to-play account. So this is what I'll do with my free-to-play account, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm going to showcase my damage distribution, as you guys can see over here. So thank you very much for tuning in. Do remember to like and subscribe in order to see more ZBest Guide video from this channel. And I'll see you guys again in my next video. Bye, guys.